around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad. The story of the violence that moved west with young America. The story of a man who moved with it. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. you say? Over here, Jim. That's so loud. Major's got guards walking all the way right around the fort these nights. Oh, what do you care? You ain't a soldier. You ain't done nothing. Look, Si, I don't want nobody at all to get suspicious of me. Not for a week anyway. What do you mean, not for a week? That's what I want to tell you. I'm going to be hauling rifles into Dodge starting day after tomorrow. Rifles? That's right, about four wagon loads. Huh. That'll be a heap of rifles, Jim. Sure it will. Well, what about Jonas? Will he give you time off to do it? Jonas. <laughs> Jonas can't stop me. He's just a fool storekeeper. Yeah, I suppose so. I figure it'll take me before five days, Si. And afterwards, I'll just quit and disappear before anybody catches on. When they do, we'll be a long ways from here. <laughs> the army will get their rifles back, Jim. Next time they go Indian hunting. Shh. Card's about to do. Come on. Over here. Can't expect the train to pull in on time every day, Chester. Well, the railroad people expect her to. Otherwise, they wouldn't write it down on the schedule board up there. Well, that's the time they hope she'll arrive. Well, then they ought to say so. With all their money, they can afford to be honest about such things. <laughs> what have you got against the railroad, Chester? Well, they're so rich, that's all, and I'm so poor. How was Saturday night, Chester? You never told me. Why, they must have been using a marked deck on me. I never had such a run of bad luck in my whole life. <laughs> Aren't you old enough to know you can't play poker with a woman sitting on your lap? A woman? We was in the O.K. stable, Mr. Dillon. We didn't even have a glass of beer. <laughs> then you didn't have much fun for your money, did you? No, sir. I didn't enjoy one minute of it. Not one minute. Hey, you fellas busy? All right, what can we do for you, mister? I got some supplies coming on the train. I need a little help loading my wagon. Oh, well, why don't you hire someone? Well, I aim to hire you two men if you want to work. I'll give you 20 cents an hour. That's fair enough. Now, here's your chance, Chester. You won't get rich, but it's something. All right. I'll take it, mister. Mm -hmm. well, what about you? Uh, oh, well, thanks, but I got to pick up some mail. You're talking to the U.S. Marshal, mister. He don't take odd jobs. U.S. Marshal? Out of fact, but I don't see no badge. Well, I don't often wear one. Well, I'm glad to meet you, Marshal. My name is Will Jonas. I am the sutler out of Fort Dodge. I'm glad to know you, Mr. Jones. My supplies are in the last freight car, Chester, down yonder. Well, where's your wagon at? It's on the other side of the train. Won't take more than an hour, hour and a half, maybe. Thirty cents. But I can sure use it. Well, let's get at it, Mr. Jonas. <laughs> Funny thing, Mr. Jonas, I never knew what a sutler did before. If you was in the Army, you'd know, Chester. Sutler is to the Army what a general storekeeper is to civilians. We sell the soldiers everything from extra food, clothes, to whiskey and playing cards. Is that what was in all them boxes? They sure were heavy. Of course they were heavy. 
And that's why I needed help. And that's why I'm buying you a beer. And here we are. Yeah. Oh, hey, look. Yeah. There's Mr. Dillon. Who? Mr. Dillon, the marshal. Oh, sure. Well, let's go sit with him. He seemed like a nice fellow. Yeah, well, you go ahead. I'll get the beer. All right. Well, here. Here's some money. Thank you, Mr. Jones. <clears throat> Hey, join you, Marshal? Uh, sure, sit down, Mr. Hey. John. Yeah, I would have met you before, Marshal, but I usually drive straight to the depot and straight back to the fort. Now, have you been at the fort long? Three, four months. I've been a sutler for ten years, ever since I got married, in fact. Is your wife at the fort? And she is. She helps keep the store there. Oh. There we are. Hey. Beer looks mighty good to a working man. <laughs> Don't take on airs, Chester. It wasn't much over an hour. Here's to you. Yes, sir. Don't you have some sort of rank in the Army, Mr. Jonas? No, I don't mean much, Marshal. I'm sort of a warrant officer. I ain't really in the Army, though. In fact, the Major's about to fire me any day as things stand. Why is he going to fire you? Oh, my assistant, a fellow named Vale, I hired a few weeks ago. The Major likes him. He wants to make him the chief sutler. Oh. See, this Vale is willing to do extra work for the Army, so the Major's always calling on him for this and for that. And It's the work the soldiers ought to do, and I just won't do it myself. Not without extra pay, I won't. Well, what sort of work, Mr. Jonathan? Oh, all kinds of things. Hauling stuff, mostly. Vale's got a wagon of his own. But he's no good. I don't like him. Nor do I trust him. Oh, why don't you fire Vail, then? Too late now, Marshal. It looked like sour grapes. And the Marshal, just... The Major, rather, he'd just hire him back as soon as he got rid of me, anyway. That Major sounds like a real hard nose to me. Well, I suppose. But he don't even know Vail's not the man's real name. A lot of men don't use their real names, Mr. Jonas. Well, what is his real name? Linza. Jim Linza. Mm. Saw it once on a letter he got here in Dodge. Jim Linza? Yes, sir, that's it. <clears throat> but I can't sit here telling you my troubles all day. Been a pleasure, gentlemen. And so long. Yeah, goodbye, Mr. Goodbye. Dillon. Oh, he's a good man, Mr. Dillon. I like him. Yeah, he is. But it's this Jim Linza I'm curious about. You know him? No, but I know enough about him to ride out and have a talk with the major. We'll go in the morning, Chester. <laughs> talking to the major, I think I'll go see Mr. Jonas. Okay, Chester. I'll meet you there afterwards. Marshal Dillon? Yeah, I'll see you after, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. Oh, good morning, Marshal. Have a chair. Oh, thank you, Major. No, uh, trouble, I hope. Well, that depends. What do you mean? Major, you've got a man out here called Vale, the sutler's assistant. Vale, oh, yes. Very willing fellow. Hard worker. What about him? He's got another name. Jim Linza. So? If he's the Linza I've heard about, he's not a very good man to have it around an army post. Now state your case, Marshal. Well, there is a Jim Linza who's a renegade. He's spied for and fought with the Indians. Sold them supplies. All of that. You think this is the man, Marshal? Well, he has the same name. And you'd condemn a man for that? No, but I'd sure keep an eye on him and find out what he's up to. I see. I think Vale's all right, Marshal. I don't think he's a renegade. Yeah, but, Major, if he is, he could sure cause a lot of trouble. One man against a regiment of cavalry? Well, I didn't say he might take on your troops single-handed. Oh, of course not. Marshal... Who told you Vale's real name is Linza? A uh, man whose word I think I can believe. Will Jonas, wasn't it? Oh, you don't have to answer. I've been watching Jonas. He's only interested in his store. I know what he's trying to do. Jonas seems like a good man to me. Perhaps, but uh, you're not in command of Fort Dodge. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. Command has its problems, Marshal. I wouldn't expect a civilian to understand them. All right. But 
What about Linda? Well, thank you for trying to help, Marshal. I'll handle the matter. By firing Jonas and making Linda your sutler, is that right? I've been thinking about it, but I'll still call him Vale. <clears throat> All right, Major. I warned you. Good day. Good day, Marshal. Turn for the second act of Gunsmoke in just a moment. But first, Sunday night, you are cordially invited to escape via CBS Radio. Yes, every weekend for a drama that will take you right out of this world, listen for Escape at the Star's Address. Hear Escape tomorrow evening on the network that brings you Dick Powell as Richard Diamond, private detective. Now, the second act of Gunsmoke. <laughs> Jonas, in time for what? Chow, Mrs. Jonas is expecting your Chester here already accepted. Because they insisted, Mr. Dillon, that's why. <laughs> well, if uh, it isn't putting you out... Oh, I... glad to have you. We live right in the back of the store here. Lil, come on out and meet the marshal. Well, here she is. Lil, this is Marshal Dillon. How do you do, ma'am? How do you do, Marshal? It's good of you to fix dinner for us. No trouble, Marshal. If you don't mind dried vegetables, that's about all the army ever eats. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds fine, ma'am. Well, some of the boys brought some fish last night, though, and I, well, I'm sort of fixing it all together. Fish stew. Oh, I made that myself. Well, then I hope you'll like mine, Chester. Oh, I will, ma'am, especially since I'm half starved. Oh, I mean, oh, I'm sure it's going to be just fine. Well, I like cooking for hungry men. It'll be ready in a few minutes. You can wash up out back. Oh, well, thank you, ma'am. There's soap out there and a towel. If nobody's run off with it yet. Oh, now, who'd do that, Lil? I don't know. But the boys seem to figure it's a good place to find a clean towel. Oh, they always return it. Dirty, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Phil. I'll be taking my wagon into Dodge this afternoon, Jonas. Again? Well, this will be the fourth day. Major wants me to. Sure. Who are these men? This is Marshal Dillon. That's Chester, uh... Proudfoot. Lawman, huh? Ain't you supposed to be in Dodge? I'm not a town marshal, Vale. I'm a U.S. marshal. Yeah, I heard of you. Your trouble out here? We came out to have dinner with the Jonases. I didn't know you knew them. You didn't? Uh, what time you leaving, Vale? I don't know. Whenever the Major says. The Major ought to be paying your wages. Yeah, he should, shouldn't he? I'll see you later. So long, Marshal. Goodbye. See what I mean, Marshal? Yeah. Well, you all go wash up and we'll sit right down. Hurry up, though. Good dinner, wasn't it, Mr. Dillon? Yeah, it was. Yeah, I'm afraid we stayed too long, though. It must be nearly three o'clock. Well, it's only five miles to Dodge. We can get there way before dark. Hey, look yonder. That wagon up ahead. Something's wrong with it. Yeah. Looks like he lost a wheel. Oh, poor fellow. Maybe we can help him. Not sure. Mr. Dillon? It's that fellow Vale. Yeah. Come on. Hello, Vale. Well, it's the marshal again. You want some help with the wheel? 
Can't put it back on by myself. There's a pole in the ditch over there. We can use it for levers. I'll get it. Yeah. Chester. Hmm? Look here. In the wagon box, sir. What? My goodness. He's got a load of rifles. Yeah. Put the canvas back. Here he comes. You think he stole them? I don't know. That pool's no good. It's rotten. What do we do now? Well, we could ride back to Fort Dodge and send some help out to you. Oh, no. No, I don't want that. No? Why not, Vale? I just don't, that's all. But it'll take at least four men to lift this wagon. Unless you want to unload it first. No, and I ain't going to unload it. Uh, wait. Here come some soldiers. That's a major. Yeah, so it is. What's the trouble here, Vale? We'll roll off, Major. Have to lift the wagon up to get it on again. Corporal Harris. Uh, All right, now, if you men will just get under it now. Uh, get it up good now. Here we go. Oh, uh, Marshal, uh, step over here, will you? Uh, sure. I, uh... I hear you had dinner with Will Jonas and his wife. Yeah, that's right. But before you say anything, Major, do you know what Vale's carrying in that wagon? Do you? Rifles. He must have 20 or so. 25. Oh. All right. This load makes an even hundred Vale's carted into Dodge the last few days. We're overstocked. So we're shipping them back to Fort Scott. Does that explain everything, Marshal? Yeah, sure. If they all get there. <laughs> You're over suspicious, Marshal. Perhaps it's the nature of your job. Perhaps. Fail's all right. His helping out with this sort of work means my soldiers have more time for their military duties. His name's Lenza, Major. And I've told you what he is. And you had dinner with Jonas. <laughs> no, I'm not convinced, Marshal. Oh, there, the men seem to have the wheel on. I've got to get back to the fort. I've just been exercising my horse a little, you know. Don't have much time. We'll get behind this bluff, Chester. He can't see us. He's not out of that cottonwood grove yet. Uh, we'll trail him like this all the way into Dodge. And if nothing happens on the road, then they're stealing those rifles off the train somehow. They? Well, I doubt if Lindsay's working alone, it'd be too difficult. You're pretty sure he's stealing them, aren't you, Mr. Dillon? Well, from what I've heard of Lindsay, he can make a lot of money off of some good rifles. He'll probably trade them to the Indians for horses and then sell the horses. He and whoever's in on it with him. Plum makes me boil to think of that major about to fire Mr. Jonas and then letting this Lindsay get by with everything. Now he's doing what he thinks right, Chester. He'll learn. Mm, I sure hope so, sir. And before it's too late. Where is that wagon? He should have come out of those cottonwoods a long time ago. Maybe his wheel fell off again. Yeah, I hope not. Oh, oh, there he is. No. No, that's a different wagon. Well, it sure is. And it's headed this way. Look, it's left the road. Yeah. I didn't see a wagon hunter come through there, did you? No. It could have been hidden easy enough, though. There's Lindsay's wagon now, just leaving the trees. What do we do? That first one will be over here pretty soon. Yeah, let's drop back a little, Chester. They might see us. Yes, sir. All right, Chester. Now, you make a big swing around this bluff and stay out of sight as long as you can. Come onto the road behind Lenz and follow him into Dodge. Right to the depot if he goes there. Well, what are you going to do? I'm going to wait right here for that other wagon. 
I'm curious about it. All right, get going. I'll see you in Dodge. Yes, sir. your hands around those lines. Now, two or three times. Fill them up. All right, now jump down. Arms high. You got that drop on me. I won't try nothing. Now, take your gun. All right, you can put your hands down. What is this, a holdup? I'm a U.S. Marshal. This is no holdup. What do you want me for? Your team will stand, drop the lines, and get around to the back of the wagon. What's this all about, Marshal? I ain't done nothing. And I don't want you, and I'll apologize to you. But first, I want to see what you're carrying. I can tell you that. It's just a bunch of shovels, and I'm late home, Marshal. Well, let's see them. Check that canvas off. Go on. Okay, Marshal. So they ain't shovels. No... No, they're sure not. Well, what's wrong with a man having a few rifles? Nothing. Yeah. About 15, I make it. Isn't that right? 15. Now, can I go? What's your name, mister? Cy Wills. All right, I'll find out your real name later. Get back on the wagon. I bought them rifles. Gonna trade them off around the country to cowboys and hunters and the like. Yeah. Go on, get up on the box. Can I go now? Sure, you can go. Right ahead of me, straight into Dodge. Now get moving, Wills. You'll have company pretty quick, Wills. Who? Now, you wouldn't want me to spoil the surprise for you, would you? If there's anything I hate, it's a renegade. Mr. Dillon? Where is he, Chester? He put the rifles on the train, sir, but there wasn't any 25 of them. I guess you found the rest, huh? Yeah, his partner had them. I got him locked up. Where's Linza now? I followed him to the Longhorn. He's in there. Yeah. The wagon's out back, Chester. You better stack those rifles in the office here. Yes, sir. I'm going after Linza. Well, you shouldn't have any trouble. He's not wearing a gun. I know. I'll be back shortly. Jump's coming up behind him that way, Marshal. What are you doing anyway? Why'd you call me that? It ain't my name. You're under arrest, Linza. My name ain't Linza. You got nothing to arrest me for? Your partner's waiting for you, Linza. I just locked him up. I got no partner. What are you talking about? Where are the rest of the rifles? What did you do with them? I don't know nothing about it. All right. I just thought it might go easier with you. You and Wills recovered all the rifles. It's up to you. Okay, Marshal. We stole a few rifles. That ain't so bad. Uh, if I tell you where they are, will you let us go? Or at least let me go? You'd cut anybody's throat, wouldn't you, Linza? We'll find the rifles. Come on. All right, Marshal. I'll give you no trouble. You broke his arm. Pick up the knife, Sam. Are you coming quietly now, Linzer, or do you want me to break your neck? I'm through, Marshal. 
Get a doc for my arm. You're bleeding, Marshal. Do you stick you? I didn't get in. It went across my ribs. You're quite a man, Linza. You don't even know how to use a knife. Now get going. I heard what happened yesterday, Marshal, so I come in early this morning. Well, glad to see you, Mr. Jonas, anytime. He didn't hurt you bad, did he, Marshal? Oh, it was my fault. I, I got careless. Doc took five stitches in him, Mr. Jonas. I watched the whole thing. Me, I don't like blood. My old man was a butcher, too. Well, maybe that's the reason, Mr. Jonas. Hmm? I, I don't follow you, Marshal. Good morning, Marshal. Gentlemen. Oh. Major. Oh, Major. Oh, that's quite a stack of rifles you've got here, Marshal. <laughs> yes, isn't it? I heard the whole story, Marshal. I hope you weren't hurt. No, I'm all right. I looked up the bills of lading... They'd obviously been altered. Out of a hundred, I figured they shipped 40 rifles and stole 60. Yeah. You still got that Pawnee scout, Big A? Yes, I have. Well, just all right out and shine the wagon tracks. Big A will find the rest of your rifles for you. Good idea. Oh, uh, Mr. Jonas, I'd like to uh, apologize to you, sir. Oh, no. That ain't necessary, Major. For me, it is. Oh, all right. I think I understand, Major. Thank you. Marshal, I find myself in an extremely embarrassing position, professionally, uh, with the Army, you understand. And I, uh... Well, I wanted to ask you... Major, I'd uh, like to ask something of you first. Why, yes, certainly. Uh, those two men I got locked up, I, I was wondering if you'd take them back to Fort Dodge. It's sort of a military matter anyway. Uh, you could try them out there. Well, that's... That's very decent of you, Marshal. Well, I figure once is enough in any one day for a man to admit he was wrong. Thank you, Marshal. I'll send a guard in for the prisoners. Oh, Mr. Jonas, would you care to ride back to Fort Dodge with me? I came in alone. Oh, be happy to, Major. <laughs> Gunsmoke, under the direction of Norman McDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were John Daner, Harry Bartell, Joseph Kearns, Julie Conger, and James Nusser. Harley Bear is Chester. Gunsmoke has been selected by the Armed Forces Radio Service to be heard by our troops overseas. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal... Fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. <music> Mystery with a twinkle in the eye. CBS Radio's Mr. and Mrs. North. Mystery with dynamite action. CBS Radio's yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring John Lund. Catch up with the North and Johnny Dollar every Tuesday on most of these same CBS radio stations. George Walsh speaking, and remember, there's action as a policeman really finds it in 21st Precinct, Tuesdays on the CBS Radio Network.